So good evening, and welcome to my panel from newbie to experience, what career role could you play? This panel started with continued discussions with students that I've had and required me to sit people in the same room to get them all on the same page. So this panel is supposed to take 45 minutes, in which includes information sharing, commentary, tools, and activity to get you moving. This activity, we're good? Yeah. So this activity is completely optional. Uh, but I found an activity right after learning a new tool and a controlled-ish environment really helps you to uh, apply that knowledge and retain it. So um, if you, just letting you know when it's coming, we'll say 30 to 35 minutes into this presentation. So you look at your watch and be like, it's time to go. So here's our agenda for tonight. And I really hope you can get through all of it while giving your mind some knowledge morsels to munch on with whatever beverages you're drinking this weekend. Um, the Q&A is at the end, so I ask that you please hold uh, your questions and comments until that point. Um, okay. So, first, let's manage some expectations. This is an adapted workshop that I delivered to college students after everyone kept coming in and same questions at different times. Um, I, you know, it was one of those casual, informal situations where I had them come in, we ordered some food, it's like you had classes in an hour, so let's, let's talk about this now, you know, this, we, I want to get these resources out to you. Uh, and it helped to talk about what their career planning was. So there will be some resources and tools outlined in this presentation, however, they've been updated after having been through a few things in my own professional life that I can add to it. So speaking of who I am, my name is George Yanez. I have a master's in arts in interdisciplinary studies from George Mason University, specializing in higher education and administration. Thank you. <laughs> I also received my bachelor's from the same institution for film and video studies. So completely different. I jumped around a lot, and that seems weird to some people, especially some recruiters that I've talked to. However, I've asked, I heard it was normal, average even. Anyway, I mean that as since I was career advisor for four years, um, in addition to some time as a graduate advisor, I also had jobs in freelance video for a few organizations and entrepreneurs. I uh, did some work for the US Navy as a video editor. I worked in as adjunct professor, took some time in the nonprofit organization arena, and currently have landed corporate work as a defense contractor. Throughout my time, there's been a common thread to always be engaging and keeping on the next rung in sight. And there were many, many instances of mistakes and missed opportunities, but I only let my resume show the vertical and lateral career moves based on the strategy that I will be talking about tonight. So here are the objectives that I want us to achieve by the end of our time here. We're gonna leave here with some career-focused tools, understand how to run an effective job hunt, and gain the building blocks for networking. This presentation is meant to touch on those, but also start the wheels turning as you move on to your weekend here at MAGFest. So, I like to start with a great quote on the job search experience, which resonates with everyone who's ever had to submit a resume online and then rewrite it on an HR online form. <laughs> so, here you go. I don't know if this is familiar if you know who just said this. Um, I'm going to let this soak in just a little bit. Where, where, is, where is it from? Yes, exactly. So there's a perception that conducting the job search and finding a job is rather difficult. And this quote might reflect how you might have been feeling to, if you're new to all this and feel like there hasn't been many tools for you to use or to get started with. So my hope is that we can change that. So here's a better quote to kick us off. Sorry about that. There is nothing like a concrete life plan to weigh you down. Because if you always have one eye on some future goal, you stop paying attention to the job at hand, miss opportunities that might arise, and stay fixedly on one path, even when a better, newer course might have opened up. It is my hope that we can reach the outlined objectives of this presentation by reframing what your future can look like. At the very least, you'll get that confirmation that you're not stuck on a single track. So with our next steps, we want to be flexible and we want to be honest. So who are you? When I talked to students, they were just taking their courses, racking up projects for their portfolio, collecting skills, and planning out what internships and potential jobs they could be getting. 
I've worked with some people who are working in a job completely unrelated to their degree or career aspirations. But it's just getting them by. So some of you are probably past that. You're fresh in your career. We're still getting the feel for things. Maybe you're not ready to commit to your career or keeping your options open, like hitting refresh on the search results for a specific job title over and over again on Indeed, LinkedIn, or whatever site's out there. Um, a search agent. Or you've had a plentiful, or you've, or you've had handful to many years of jobs and career changes and don't really know where you'll fit until you hit complacency. So the transition from just starting out to having questions about where you should land next should keep in mind one thing. This is about progress, not perfection. What we want to focus on are the things we can change, how we can adapt, and how we should be seeking environments that support us rather than feeling like each day is a meat grinder until you're just worn out. That's not what I want for you. So when I first talked to students, the analogy of writing the resume and identifying what people were good at was like looking at a character sheet. And I, I, I love Final Fantasy. Um, I don't know if you can tell. Um, but I definitely use references to Final Fantasy, including the progression of skills to newer jobs, of which some would be a good fit, or a hammer where a scalpel was needed. Uh, when I talk to the students, I always tell them, like, you're coming to school with your, your, or you're coming to school, you're coming to work with your skills, your abilities, your stats, and your gear. So it's like, you know, the, the tools, your computer, your laptop, whatever. But I would break down what we knew about what students would be into to what we call a skills inventory, which was a listing of their hard skills, soft skills, and transferable skills. If you ever sat in a resume writing seminar or stepped a foot in a career services department, just mention this is probably glazing your eyes over. Uh, we want to get past that. We want to get past the glazing over and recognize that skills inventory is the foundation of building out your career to a point where you can ideally plan out the next three to five years of your life for the jobs you're able to get if you play your cards right. Which is so much fun as a career advisor. Hard skills come from many different sources. When we're doing our skills inventory, we want to do the following. Identify where you gained experience and what were the specifics of the different things that you did. Hard skills can originate from education. Your degree program can provide a clear-cut transcript of what you learned or classwork that allows you to stretch your legs on a specific program, skill, or subject matter. Hard skills can also come from experience, which will be work, volunteer, internships, projects, and extracurriculars. But training is also the best clear-cut source of hard skills. Some have certifications, are measurable by time and occurrence, and if it's an in-demand skill, there will be a lot of opportunities to learn it, and maybe some free to affordable classes to get hands-on with. With some training, you can even set a pace for yourself that fits your life and time budget. I know LinkedIn has a lot of these courses. YouTube has a plethora of these just courses that you can just look up and know what, the, what, what things are, so like what keywords are and things you can say, what things you can seek out. Um, so that's a start. Examples of hard skills come in coding, experience with CRM systems, presentations, project management, knowing a foreign language, and strategic planning. These are things you can get from taking training or getting hands-on experience with at work. And here's another one. Reframing hard skills with another Final Fantasy reference. You can build up from having a beginner to expert levels of proficiency in something, but it's not the same as having applicable experience. I vividly remember having a student who would take up as many software courses as he could, rack up as much debt as he could, assuming that he would get like a six-figure salary out of, straight out of undergrad. And that's not how things work. You actually have to have the experience. Um, time is... The time was against him. So you have to know that that's just, that's just how things unfortunately work. So this is why I always recommend planning out your next steps. So I have many experiences that match up with the, so I currently have many experiences that match up with project management with a resume that reflects that trajectory, but I don't have my actual project management professional certification. So I slapped down a bunch of tiles on this with many different things that I've done that can say like, oh, you, you do project management work. 
but I don't have that 36 hours that they require to actually take the exam to say, now you're a project manager. But that's, that's the issue because time is not a hard skill. Fortunately, I will receive that eligibility in March 2023, so I'm like, let's go. So these are soft skills that have come up regularly in discussions with employers and hiring managers. Communication, critical thinking, problem solving, time management, and leadership. So there are other soft skills and a plethora of resources that categorize soft skills in different ways. So this list is not exhaustive. Uh, later in this presentation, I will re share a resource that pulls all potential soft skills and hard, hard skills from different jobs, and you'll see my examples listed here are just scratching the surface. So, examples of soft skills include leading a team and having examples of when that happened, scheduling and juggling of different priorities, having the ability to know when you've worked in ambiguity, but also when you know you can ask for more information. Like that, that's really a good one. Uh, likeability is also a soft skill, as well as empathy, because they're both knowing how to navigate interactions with others, which is also useful for many other things like deadlines, team building, or creating buy-in from people who don't know what the next steps are. So I've been in situations where I joined a team that had a history of just not liking each other, yet you're the only person that they'll listen to because you're new, um, you have like a, a background of like, yeah, we can, we can listen to him. Like, we'll, we'll, you know, I don't want to talk to this person, but I'll talk to you. It's like middleman. It's great. Soft skills are absolutely important as you set apart from other candidates that set you apart from other candidates. And when you start to personally realize what you've been getting more effective at, you might start seeing other potential avenues for a career open up to you, opening up to you. People keep screaming in. So let's start applying the skills inventory. The best way to extract the soft skills into a statement that can be used in both a resume and a cover letter. We have some soft skills highlighted in this response. So I'd say it's a pretty good start. So let's go to that section here that says, I learned to be a leader through maintaining a schedule with colleagues adhering to deadlines, and having my team succeed through effective communication. I mean, that, that looks like it can go on to a cover letter, it's like a resume, it's kind of just like, it's, it's pretty good, what I, what I think. I'm sure people have other opinions. But when we add some hard skills such as proficiencies, the response becomes more robust. So it says here, I learned to be a leader through maintaining a schedule with colleagues on Confluence, adhering to deadlines via Microsoft Project, and having my team succeed through effective communication on Microsoft Teams and Zoom. So you're adding the hard skills on there, you're adding, you're making it more relatable to what the, the team, the company, the hiring manager is looking for. So this is also an example of being a leader, which is a transferable skill. The transferable skill is an ability or expertise that can be applied in a variety of roles and careers. So you can be a leader in many different jobs, or you can use this to show your initiative. My past few jobs involved heavy use of prioritization and scheduling, and because as a career advisor you have to manage the schedule of dozens of students, their files, and their careers, um, that just, it's, it, it gets a, a little heavy. So it's just, we jump forward to when I used that same skill set when I was working in a nonprofit, uh, managing 65 staff members, their schedules, their travel, the, the, the budgets, um, it's just, being able to create all that and put it into a dashboard for the executives to see. And then now in my current role, I'm tracking a corporate budget, a corporate project, deadlines, software builds, and documentation from at least six months out. Um, and that's was like, I have to like think about all this. And when people say like, why, like how, how can you do it? It's like, it's, it's all been leading up to this. Like it's like, I, it's, you start small, like the, the, my favorite, way of describing what I do and, and, and when, I, when I go to like networking things and like, so what do you do? It's like, my favorite example is saying, if you can imagine, uh, you imagine a lake and you have a lot of paper boats on one end and you're trying to push them from that end to the other end. That's pretty much my career. That's, that's what I've been doing. Like each of these is just like different projects, there's different teams or whatever. I'm just pushing them to make sure don't sink, don't sink, don't sink. Um, 
and that's that's pretty much been like my career so far. And it's not like there's not like an actual like job title for that until I learned what a project manager does. So when used together, these three websites can give you a good launch pad to engage in your job search. Uh, is anyone familiar with these, these, these websites? Yeah? I love these sites. Um, so th the following that I'm going to show are screenshots because I wasn't aware of like, the internet situation here um, and of, of technical difficulties. So we're just going to brush on them, show you what this, uh, the sites look like so you don't click on the wrong thing and be like, that's, that's not right. So the first website is the US Bureau of Labor Statistics Occupational Outlook Handbook. This website gives you an in-depth look at jobs, their projections of new jobs, growth rates, median pay, how to break into that job, and similar occupations related to the job that you're looking up. When you dive into an occupation on this website, it gives you the option of looking into ONET Online for skills and other details needed to be successful. So this is just like everything that's out there, every employer has to report something, and it goes onto this site, and you can see exactly what people are looking for. Uh, you can plan out. This is, this is what I tell people to start planning out with, like, what do you want to be? Well, how do you get into that position? And we just jump and jump and jump down until we say, okay, so that looks like you won't get that job until five years if you do this, this, and this. Own and Online is also a great resource for detailed job descriptions uh, of jobs, related roles, and hard and soft skills required for each job. There's also a search function you can use to work uh, as an indicator of finding out if your career, current resume uh, matches the percentage of what uh, a job is asking for based on keywords alone. Um, it's helped me confirm if my resume matches. Like if I'm, if I'm looking for a job, like I go on like Indeed.com or something, LinkedIn, and I just, I, I pull that job title and I put it onto here. It's like, oh, 100%, okay, cool. Let me take my entire resume and dump it on here and then say, Am I like 70%? Am I 80%? You're like, what's, am I hitting the right keywords? And let me change out my resume, hit the keywords there. Uh, this, is, this is a good site for that. And then, so the final resource is wonderful for college students because it's preparing them to ask those hard questions about specific jobs uh, and industries that should, they should be looking at. Uh, especially if they think they're going to be funneled into one type of job for the rest of their life. This website shows you that if you get the communication degree, it's not just marketing or advertising. There's so many different other options out there, and it tells you that in like a summary of just like what exactly is out there for, for that degree. Um, so, so when I would talk to a student or something, I, I would say like this is this is what your degree is. Um, these are different avenues that you can do. Like it's 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 giving someone the confidence of saying I am not stuck with what I have, um, and it's it's really just helpful for just having that conversation, having those conversations started with yourself with a friend or with uh, a family member who's, who is like 30, 40 years in their career doing the same thing. Um, you know, this can help that generate that conversation. Okay, so this is my water break. I, I, I built in a water break for myself. So how, uh, um, we have about 10 to 15 minutes. Wow, yeah, that was sweet. We have 10 to 15 minutes to the actual activity. Um, so I, I wrote a note here. Uh, this, this activity that's coming up later is kind of like speed friending on the, the, the theme of this panel's topic. So it's a great opportunity just for you to meet people, talk to them, and say like, to like introduce yourself. And this, this is, if you're in this panel room right now, it's a great opportunity to say this is the environment that we're trying to have right now. Everyone here has a story or has something that they want to talk about, or if they don't want to talk about it, I, I, we can, portion something out there, but uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully this has been good information so far. And I'm always happy to talk about it more after or uh, whenever we finish. Mm, that's good quality issue. Oh. So we are now on to tools. The fundamental tool that can help you get thinking about how to construct your resume and address your cover letter and hit the talking points is with the T-chart. Has anyone ever seen this before? Like, is this not, like, not new? Okay, let's just some, some hands. Um, so there's two columns. The left column being the job description of like 
I'm going to show uh, uh, I'm going to show a job description here, and every job description has bullet points or has duties, responsibilities, or whatever. Uh, and we're going to break those out in the left column. The right column is your response with your experiences, skills, or other relevant information that addresses that bulleted point. So I use this method for every job that I go to in every interview or, or uh, every cover letter. Like it's, it's, it's helped me immensely. I have like notepads of like I, when I go into like an interview over the phone or something or uh, I go into an interview and they allow me a notepad. It's like I have it right here on my lap. Like, oh yeah, and I can answer that. So it's, it's easier for me to think about this. Um, like I'm not struggling when I write my resume. And when I have something figured out, I can bank those responses. I can use it for something later. Like you're, you're building a repository of, of, of information that you can use. Uh, and that builds to your own personal confidence of how to respond to a job listing. So I'm going to be uh, showing a resume that I pulled. For this example, it's just a snapshot of the job description from Indeed.com for an associate consultant here in Washington, D.C. Um, so Job listings have, they're broken down by like summaries, requirements, uh, duties, but we're going to be focusing on duties. So it's uh, the first two bullet points here. Uh, and I, this is my favorite part, mostly because I like breaking down job descriptions and people who like, like matching them up and like, oh, you're great for this job. Let's break down this and, and see how you could fit. Um, that's, that's the whole like, I think that's the whole motivation for like when you're building a character like in the game or something like it's it's you know it's the right person you just got to give them the right things and then you can do the job or whatever you can do the, the quest that you got um, it's, it's it's fun for me like it's how it's fun for some people when they go on the Zillow to look at houses that they can't even afford you know or it's I'm gonna stop right there so what I do next is I pull the job description onto each individual row so you can see here like I just said I pulled the first two bullet points into their cells separately. Did I? There we go. Okay. And then I populate the right column with the experiences or skills that are relevant that I'm responding to. Uh, so you can see here, working in a team environment to research and prepare high quality one-time inputs to and components of client deliverables sounds like a group project, you know, something that you've been in before. Uh, if I, you know, if you delivered something via PowerPoint and, and Word, or you organize something in Confluence, uh, that's that's just like a wiki, Wikipedia software, um, or if you commu and I communicate it over Teams, like it just that matches. Like I put your own experiences on it there. And then next, earns clients and team trust, accurate completion of tasks that support client outcomes and decision making, including research, report development, and delivery of recommendation in certain cases. There's some overlap with the previous point, um, but I've shown that I have a growing, since you see some repeats there, it's a growing proficiency of uh, working in teams, engaging in discussions, and some new expansions into JIRA project and working with ambiguity and prioritization. Um, so this is an exercise because you're like generating these ideas like, oh, I can do that. Yes, I can do that, or I've done it before. And it's, as the more job descriptions that you see and the more T charts that you make, it's 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 a mental thing. It's like I can do this. Like I can I can do this, but but not that job, you know, I just 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 keep you keep working down because it's super in confident it's super important to uh, to be confident in in talking about this. Um, about especially about these right columns. Uh, because you'll have to explain to like a job uh, a recruiter or a hiring manager of like why are you the best person for the job? Well, you know, I, I've been working with the, the stuff on the right column. Like, I, you, you have to be your subject matter expert for yourself. Um, and you have to tell them, like, where you got the skills. One of the tips to convincing someone to hire you is that you don't need constant supervision and that your training period is very short. Um, because why not, as a hiring manager, hire the person that takes less time to train? There are other factors involved in convincing someone to hire you, but I, I'm personally convinced that's a good one. That's at least a way of saying, like, I want this person on my team, but our budget only allows for a certain 
certain amount of time for us to get them on board. Um, okay, so we've gotten rid of the job description because we don't need it anymore. We're building out our resume. So we've populated the right column. Everything's great. We just start dressing up the, the resume with a focus on skills and experiences that hit on the job itself. You can see here that the job in Macy's hits on some communication experience and engaging in discussions to get more information out of ambiguity. The internship also really gives first-hand experience of the other left-hand column points. So we're, we're, this is just an example. Um, I, I just, I just, it, it makes sense to, to just work on like seeing how these things look in an actual resume. But there are also issues with resumes because I've, I've seen it a lot and I, I've, heard from people who hire people, other people, um, the header is the first thing that, that people see when they look at your resume. Uh, it's, it's, it's expected, first name, last name, um, but what's recommended is uh, city and state. Don't put your full address. I, I don't know why people do that. You put your full address, your, your, your government name, and you're like, oh, I can find this person now or something. If you, they lose their resume, like, why are you putting your information out like that? Um, phone number, classic. How can we reach you if we like your resume? If recruiter, recruiters go through phone, like if, if, if you're a good match, they, they just like, they call you up, it's like, uh, they're on the other line, that's great. Or you have a voicemail that says, um, you need like a standard voicemail when they call you, say like, this is first name, last name, away from my phone right now. Please leave a message, your contact information, and I'll reach out. If you're on a job search, or you're putting your resume out there, and you have your phone number, you would better have a good voicemail for people to hear. Um, it's, it's just like, that's the first, if they don't reach you on the first chance, and they see your voicemail, you have to always leave that constant first good impression. And then the, the biggest one is your email. You want to keep it simple. Uh, use an email address that's just like first name, last name at a free email provider. Um, you want to avoid things that are like, well, you can do things like uh, first name, last name, uh, a number, like a, a one digit, two digit, three digits, or whatever. Like if there's multiple people with the same name as you, you know, like I'm George number five or something, like, oh, right. Um, but you don't want to do anything that's like a catchphrase or like a, a like something, something like naughty, you know, like, or like, a, like, like an inside joke. Like that's, someone's gonna look at that and be like, who the, who the heck is this? Like, like you know, your credibility starts going out as soon as you start messing up on things like that. Just the smallest things. You, you wanna give an employer the smallest thing to like, say like, well this guy has like a same resume as this guy, but you know, like an underwear lover, like, well, I don't, I don't want that. <laughs> so, People are just trying to, I'm sorry about that. People are just trying to see if you were a match to solving the problems. And they will leverage anything against you that seems off when deciding who's the best candidate. Um, what was it? It was, it was like two weeks ago, a, f a friend of mine was trying to hire somebody and like a, it, it just had like a random set of e like, like, like WX something, 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 something uh, at like yahoo.com. And it's like, I, that's not even their name. It's like, none of these letters are in their actual full name. And then, you know, they added their GPA. And it's like, all of a sudden, it's like, you add your GPA, and you, you've, you're like, in, in your 50s. It's like, why are you including information that's not necessary um, or relevant at this point right now? Um, I mean, if you wanted to, sure. But that's just like small things that put your resume into scrutiny. Uh, after you've, you've worked on the T-chart and after you've created like a, a resume that matches to the job and you start putting things on scrutiny against you, that's just not a good strategy. So next is the environment of just the work, workplace and just in general, your industry or whatever. It's important to go into job market environment with your adaptable resume and some experience, but also knowing what's going on out there. So just hit Google News with like some keywords like recruiting, hiring job in the industry that you're trying to get into, and then you'll see what the news outlets and, and whatever they're assuming about your, your area. You know, that, that's like you want, you want to 
go informed. Like when you're looking to apply for a job, you want to do research on the actual company itself and what they're doing in the department that you're actually applying for. But you also want to know the bigger scope of things because the bigger picture is much better than saying like, please hire me. So the landscape has changed for the work environment from 2020 to 2022 um, for employee to employer relations. Some jobs will be open to remote work while others won't say you can remote work, but the slight mention of it puts you out of the running as if it's your deal, if it's your deal breaker, someone's gonna say like, mm, but we really need them in the office. You don't, but some people are still like, I, I need people, I need seats, I need, I need butts and seats. So additionally, employees are also leaving companies for opportunities whose benefits are better matched for who they are among other personal economic reasons, especially things that click with them. So it's like, employers are aware of the fact that you want the best for yourself and you, you just gotta tell them that you're, you're, you're looking out for yourself. Again, again you, you be, be the champion for yourself, highly important. So we're in a new era of the job market and it's important to be aware of how you move forward and whether that's immediately or after you've gotten the, the skills and things that you need to move on. So like I said before, time is not a hard skill. Like it's, it's just, you have to figure out what your next steps are and always be thinking about that. If something, you know, it's, it's like, you're waiting for opportunity A to happen, but if opportunity B comes along, like don't, don't wait, you know, or know yourself better. And that's, I go into it later where I talk about, um, you're, you're gonna hit a lot of issues when you're doing your job search. Um, there's gonna be a lot of rejections and it's just important to, to, to know like, it's not you. It's what's going on out there. So, I, I like this quote. Um, so Brene Brown has a podcast where she coins this exact term, strong back, soft heart, uh, strong back, soft front, wild heart. Sorry, I read ahead a little bit too fast. Specifically, she mentions when she coined this term, she was at an event and she was wiped out after the main session and she was just saying, like, she was trying to force herself, like, I gotta go to this meet and greet, and then I gotta go to this, this later evening event. And then her colleague, who, who initially coined the term soft back, uh, strong back, soft front, convinced her, don't. Just go to your room, you finish your session, go to your room, decompress. Just, before you do that, do anything else, just, just calm, like, you know, self-care, like basically self-care. Like this, just don't stress yourself out. And so Brene, uh, she adopts this mantra, mantra. And so from what I come to see for this panel and also my own journey where strong back is courage. It's the build up to withstand adversity and gain courage. The soft front is the receptiveness to the things you cannot change, that you're pushing yourself towards past whatever experiences may jade you and accept those that empower you. And the wild heart of being unapo unapologetically you, that unique person behind the resume. So we want to combine these three to find the answer to the question. Are we willing to show up and be seen when we can't control the outcome? So we're moving on into the next few days at MAGFest not knowing anyone. We'll maybe make some friends or acquaintances we'll make a connection that's deeper than that. Somewhere down the road, someone's gonna mention a job opening and you're gonna have that mutual connection from MAGFest or from a, a meetup or something afterwards. Um, but that's what gets your foot in the door. It's about taking that risk and seizing those opportunities. You know the details of your own past experiences and the skills that you've been granted. You sat, you sat through this baseline information of like how to make a resume, how to adapt your past experiences to hit those key points in the job posting. So let's talk about the next important factor in your job search. The job search is not 
only a resume and hoping you get lucky with an interview. It's about making a connection with someone outside of the platonic and romantic sense. Here are three categories for connections that we will go over. Networking opportunities, maintaining professional relationships, and personal love keep. Networking opportunities can come in both in-person and virtual varieties. How we identify and reach networking opportunities is up to you, but as long as you can make it a habit to identify and reach them is what is important. So I've gone to professional networking happy hours where it's just like a bunch of people around the table, you know, talking about, so what do you do? You know, I, I do that, that's, that's great. What do you do? Uh, so I heard about your company or, or you know, just, it's just your, because if you, if, you, if you do that prior research, you know what the industry is about, you can talk more about certain things and keywords and things that you hear. But usually those networking happy hours go to like, someone's ordering wings and then someone ordered a round of drinks and it's like, awesome. Social events are either things like MAGFest to social sports leagues where you meet great people and awesome friends. Uh, the funny thing about how I got my current job is that I, my current supervisor who hired me, uh, I met him through an endurance event that I did uh, called GORUCK and we kept in touch and I checked in him when he had a job posting that he was ready to fill is like, I have this posting here, do you know anyone who can do it? And I say, I can do it, me, 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 me. And so, you know, I, 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 we, we had the interview, we talked and I had the right experience at that point in my life to be a good match. But if I asked him two years earlier in, in 2020, I wasn't ready. Um, from, from like 2020 to 2022, I was working in this nonprofit. We were, I was managing all these things remotely and I was just like, I took on more things and more things. Like I gotta learn more because like, what else is out there for me? Like I, I realized in that point, I was in five years in this nonprofit and I was like, I, I don't wanna do this. Like I don't wanna do this anymore. And so I had that opportunity of like, I reached out to him and I was like, yeah, let's go. And then I got the job. <laughs> so virtual can also be just as effective if we frame it in the job search. I'm really sorry about this image. Um, LinkedIn is where you can curate yourself much better than Facebook or Instagram, and it also helps you connect with colleagues, friends, and businesses. I used to do a writing series where I gave out, like when I was a career advisor, I used to do some like just notes and blog posts and things, and my students would click like, and it would it would boost these posts to like their network, and I was like, oh, that's 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 pretty cool, and that's like an effective tool if you wield social media correctly. Um, the thing is this, with social media, if you put in toxicity and hot takes, you'll only be surrounded by toxicity and hot takes. If someone wants to use you as a reference or see if you're a good match for their employer, you'd better be aware of how you use social media. So virtual meetups are a great opportunity um, to meet people, and I'm sure there's plenty of that going around this weekend. So. Um, especially things that transition to like the in-person stuff. So pff, take advantage of it. It's only Thursday. We got like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and for some people, Monday. Next is connections for maintaining professional relationships. And it's not just let's grab dinner because one, that really hits the wallet. Like that's like, I don't, I don't got money to be taking every single person out for dinner like, or just for drinks. Like, I, no, we're, I mean, we're good. I got, you got the next round. Um, but two, that's, that's a lot of mental energy, energy to be like planning this stuff out. Like, I, like you're, you're pretty much just shaving yourself down, being like, I, I really want a job, but I also have to keep doing this and I have to keep, there, there are other ways to do this. Um, so alternatively, here's what you can do. You could check in with your friends and contacts, maybe sending a like on their posts or commenting things like, I'm glad things are going well. You can celebrate their successes, like when they post about an achievement, because you want to be all about those good feelings too. Like whatever you put out there, you want to also receive. Um, and if you feed that into like to, to like algorithms, like within LinkedIn, you know, you get nothing but like success, like like things like trickle in like that. Um, you can offer a wider net for their accomplishments. You can share their posts and show others what your network is doing, because like if you share like this is this is my this is my people's, you know. People say like, oh, this person, this person's great. Like they, they know this person, you know, it's, it's, 
you're acting as like a referral uh, or a reference um, that, can, that, that can help in the long run. Or you can introduce them to people you think might be able to help them or share their relative goals. Um, you can also donate or help with donations if they're just starting a business or doing fundraising for a project. Um, again, it's just an option. <laughs> or volunteer some available time to a cause or effort that they're working on. Most importantly, you want to refine that connection with yourself. What is your social media presence? Again, social media. Is there one? Ensure your interests have clear boundaries. Don't push yourself too hard. Specifically, don't feed trolls and think you're a champion of fighting a good fight against people who are other keyboard warriors over a meme or something. It's not worth it and spills over the way you interact with other people. Again, it's the whole, you feed in toxicity and hot takes, you're gonna get it back. You wanna take strategic risks. If you find something that makes sense for your career growth, why not jump at it? Or maybe you can make it happen at your current project or role. Like, see what makes sense with the information you know about yourself. You want to be selective on the tail of taking strategic risks. Don't take opportunities that are low quality. Know what those are, but don't wait around for the best option because it might not make itself known until certain changes in your life have been made. And then the last one here, it's time management. It's not always about the grind. No one just all of a sudden wakes up and breathes success. Everyone has a starting point and everyone has a recalibration point in their life. Check in with yourself. If you think you're doing great, awesome. Ask a friend, ask a family member, someone who knows you better. Recalibrate yourself. Like, is, am I doing great? Like, what's, like, what people, if, you're, if someone says like, uh, yeah, uh, no, you're not. Like, you're literally, you look terrible. <laughs> so friends and family know you best and it's a good reminder to see if you're burning yourself out or just not planning efficiently. Again, that's the, that's the whole having a network, people. So let's talk about actual networking. So it's not just you go up to someone and say, hey, add me, or, or you know, uh, uh, some message on social media or whatever. You want to go into any situation as a subject matter expert for yourself. So here are some key tips. Have an elevator pitch or an opening statement ready. These can be 60 seconds or less, and honestly, would just take some preparation and confidently like, hash out. But don't make it scripted. You don't want to say the same script over and over again. You just better to have like bulleted points. So, let, you know, so like I say with like uh, recalling or, or uh, when you write something down, it's just like, well, I know about that, I know about that. It's just, you start building the confidence in yourself and who you are. You don't need a script. You need that information about yourself. The next one is have a confident approach which involves eye contact. Body language is also important. Because while you might want to talk to someone and you think you're killing it with the talking game and everything's going well, is that person even receptive anymore? Like, did they check out the second you said something dumb? This leads me to my next point. Have a closing statement. It could be as simple as, thanks, I appreciated this. You know, have a great day. You know, I've been, or like, I look forward to talking more. Like just, if you know, if you know that conversation is going down, be like, ah, we're out, you know, like, that's, that's it, closing statement, get out of there. Um, it's, 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 a, it's just, it's, it makes things much, much easier. So I have a quick test here, and I'm gonna try and go through this really quickly. So, uh, so hi, my name is, and then uh, I'm just like Bob or something. So, hi, my name is Bob. What brought you to this event? You see here, we're opening with a soft introduction, and we're passing the ball to the person we just met. Hi, my name is Bob. I'm so excited for what's happening tomorrow. So you got the introduction, and you're focusing on the event itself. It builds some intrigue for what you're excited for and hoping the other person has your attention. Or, and then ask, like, oh, what are you excited for? Hopefully they say that. Hi, my name is Bob. You have beautiful eyes. How about we not do this because the results may vary and we just don't know enough about you or that other person to, be, to leverage this back to a good conversation. Like this is, this is not the place for that. But then there's also a fourth dialogue option. Hi, my name is Bob. 
your eyes are too beautiful. You want to calm it down, Derek, because we don't know if this is like, is this a fight scenario? Like, what are we, are we intentionally going off on the wrong foot? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who's doing this. So the first option is correct because you're opening the door to interest and shared experiences. A solid opening statement is getting someone to open up to you rather than the second dialogue option of hoping they pull your finger. So as you look at your guidebook app and you see the different panels that we have here this weekend, consider that many of them are opening steps to a variety of different leveling up steps with people who have a variety of different skills and experiences that led them to where they are today. If this was an intentional panel track for personal development that MacFest put together, I hope more people take advantage of this weekend to actually enjoy themselves, but also open their minds a bit to like something new. So like the question of how did you get into this? Like, or it's like, how did you get into this job or like this programming thing or whatever? Like that's a great one for seeing what led a panelist to share their career journey into the, the, the role they took on today. So we've hit the activity portion of my panel and I really hope you can participate for one or two rotations. But if you just want to chat up front, I'm also very open and up to that. Um, I'm going to stay here until my time is up. Um, so I, I really appreciate everyone for having been here this after this and uh, hopefully you've taken down some good notes or uh, you know, made some cool drawings. I'm totally cool with, with any of that. So here we go. Activity is called my opening statement. So the rules are each side of the room is split into different opening statements. Um, anyone on that side should only use that opening statement listed per the map that I've put there. So the formula is, hi, my name is, and your opening statement. So if they're standing there, you ask if they're participating first, like just to make sure, like, oh, you're, you're doing this or not, or you're just waiting for your friend. Um, after the statements are done, move from both parties. Uh, after, after the statements are done from both parties, say thank you, your closing statement, and just move on. Uh, but feel free to also follow up on an opening statement as well with, uh, if you feel comfortable doing it. Um, again, avoid using the same opening statement that's not in your section. And like I said in the beginning, please use this space to engage in these conversations. Um, this is, if, if you don't want to do it, totally cool. If you want to hang out here and talk a bit more, I'm open, open to that too. But uh, so we're going to start. So like back there, that'll be what brought you to MacFest? Straight in the back is, what do you think your favorite skill is? Where did you learn it from? So we're talking about skills and hard skills and soft skills, you know? And then over here, right by the doors, what do you do and what brought you there? So thank you very much. Um, I'm going to leave this up if you'd like to participate, but totally understand. All right, thank you very much. My name is George Giannis.